So it starts right now. The latest on the Omicron COVID-19 variant that has countries scrambling to keep their residents safe. That story is next. And outside with City Cam. Oh, it looked like yesterday, but it's not anything near yesterday. Today is going to be an absolutely gorgeous day. It's a little, I don't know, a little wet still. The roads were a little, a little moist coming in. A little in. soggy out there. But they're drying up. It's uh, drier. The air's drier. Yeah. There's no rain in it. It's Sunday. It's 6 o'clock. It's November 28th. Meteorologist, meteorologist David Sears. He's doing a great job. This I just, <laughs> it's true. I, I call it like I see it. That's yeah. what I saw. What, what I saw was a little bit of fog on 35 coming in. So. You're exactly right, guys. There, uh, the roads are drying, so a little bit of fog out there this morning in patches around San Antonio. So we're not seeing dense fog by any means out there. Uh, but you will be seeing some fog if you have an early morning uh, plans this morning or if you're hitting the roads early on one of the busiest travel days of the year. 45 degrees at Bernie Stage Airfield, 46 in Bandera, 44 in Comfort, 43 in New Braunfels, and 44 at JBSA Randolph. Earlier this morning, visibility at the airport was down to uh, about half a mile, and as you can see, that has improved. It's a really shallow fog out there, uh, and visibility is down to half a mile in New Braunfels. So today, a much better day than yesterday, as David was mentioning. If you want to get outside and decorate uh, for the holidays. Know that today is going to be a good day to do that. Winds will be from the north at about 5 to 15. We'll top off in the upper 60s for the high temperature with low humidity and plenty of sunshine today. Hey, coming up again, as I just mentioned, a busy travel day uh, across the nation. I'll have a look at your travel forecast across Texas and what you can expect in San Antonio for the remainder of the week. David. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, we want to get some late breaking news south of downtown fire crews busy overnight. Right now, they are on. Right now, we have crews there on the scene of a big fire. Here's a look at where this is happening. This is in the 100 block of Shea. That's near South Flores and East South Cross. Right now, our crew is getting information. We can tell you it started about an hour ago. Seven fire units are still on the scene. We're staying on top of this developing story. We'll check in with Jonathan Cotto live a little later in our newscast. New this morning, police are trying to figure out what led to a shooting of a man overnight outside a home on the city's northwest side. This happened just before midnight. Police say two men were outside a home on Springdale Drive when one person pulled out a gun and shot the other person in the back. This is in the neighborhood near Babcock and De Zavala. The man shot was taking University Hospital for treatment. The other man that pulled the trigger took off before officers arrived, according to police. Police say neighbors witnessed the shooting but weren't able to give them a description description of the man. And we now know the identities of two men killed during a shooting on Thanksgiving on the northeast side of town. They are 25 year old Eugene Hodge and 28 year old Charles Woolsword. Police said Hodge and Woolsword were at a Thanksgiving gathering when someone drove by and just opened fire. There were multiple people inside the home, including children. Two women were also shot. Police said witnesses were not being cooperative and at last check, police are still searching for the suspects. A local mother continues to hold out hope that her son's killer be caught. Lori Rocha's son, Aaron, was murdered five years ago in what police describe as a road rage incident. Back in 2016, Aaron was shot and killed while riding in a vehicle with a friend on Hebner Road near Northwest Military the day after Thanksgiving at 2.30 in the morning. Every year since Aaron's death, Lori is vigilant about making sure her son's name, her son's name spoken and her request for justice is known. Keep my son's face in this neighborhood throughout San Antonio because somebody knows. Well, despite every year getting a little harder as time moves on, Rocha says it's the memories of those who knew her son best that keep her fighting. Anyone who might have any information urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. The community coming together to help the victim of a recent carjacking, Alana Castaneda's Grav Maga Group, Hosted this fundraiser yesterday to help pay for her medical expenses. Castaneda has to endure an extensive surgery after she was shot during an attempted carjacking at the Quarry Market. The group says Castaneda is more than just a member. She's family and they want to help in any way they can as she recovers. We're a family, we're a team, we work together. So when one falls, we all fall. One gets hurt, we all get hurt. Oh my gosh, I'm just so like <laughs> overwhelmed with like all the love and support. I love it. At the conclusion of the event, the group presented Castaneda a gift symbolizing that she is a warrior. 
More countries are banning travel from South Africa now after leaders there identified the COVID-19 Omicron variant. Officials in South Africa are calling the travel restrictions a sort of punishment after the World Health Organization warned countries about overreacting to those concerns. The Biden administration, which also put a travel ban in place for South Africa, is standing by its decision. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. Growing concerns around the world about a new variant of COVID-19, first identified in Botswana this month, the World Health Organization classifying Omicron as a variant of concern. Its ability to infect people who have recovered from infection and even people who've been vaccinated make us say this is something you got to pay really close attention to. The United States on the growing list of countries shutting down travel from South Africa and several other countries beginning Monday. This probably is already global. It is possible that the travel restrictions will help slow things down a little bit, uh, but it will not have a large effect. Officials in South Africa unhappy with the travel bans, saying the country is being punished for its advanced genomic sequencing that helped detect the variant. Secretary of State Antony Blinken trying to mitigate South Africa's frustration, praising the country for quickly identifying the variant and for its transparency. But the Biden administration is still Standing by the decision. We will take it one step at a time, but as of now, we've done what we believe is necessary. Starting tonight, Israel says it will close borders to foreign visitors for two weeks. Right now, it has one case of the variant. In Europe, 61 people who arrived in the Netherlands on two flights from South Africa have tested positive for the coronavirus and are in isolation. Further tests are underway. They uh, will be sequenced to find out if we have to deal with a new version of the coronavirus. Germany has identified two cases of the variant in people who had traveled from South Africa, and Italy has confirmed a case of the variant in a traveler from Mozambique. Meantime, Abbott Laboratories, which is a big U.S. manufacturer of COVID-19 tests, says it has looked at the Omicron variant and is confident its tests will detect the variant. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Hey, right now, we want to get you back to that late breaking news we told you about just a second ago. It's happening south of downtown. It's a big fire. And that's right. Jonathan Cotto just arrived at the scene. So, Jonathan, where are you and what can you tell us about the situation there? Yes, I'm located at the corner of what, the 100 block of Shea Street. That's near West Sayers and South Florida is here on the city's south side. Now, San Antonio Fire Department defensively battling the fires at this home. I'm going to move out of the way so you can take a quick look. About four units responding to the scene just before 5 o'clock this morning. Crews on scene tell us there was some initial water supply issues, but once they quickly established the location, they were, able, they were able to take on the flames. Now, we have learned this was a vacant home. There was some concern as there is a detached home in the back side of this house. But crews say the fire isn't directly threatening that home, but efforts to gain anyone's attention inside were now successful. Now, as you can see here in the distance, they're still trying to contain any hot pockets, hot areas of concern here, reflashes that may uh, reemerge. But of course, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. But the important thing here is nobody was injured. Crews and the home, again, important to mention, was vacant. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. It is 608 and 45 degrees. Still coming up on Good Morning San Antonio, a perfect season on the line for the UTSA Roadrunners. They wrapped up the regular season on the road in North Texas yesterday. We'll show you how it ended. Coming up next, final preparations are being made to begin celebrating Hanukkah. And this year, the holiday is being observed for the first time at Vice President's official home. We have the story. And outside with live cam, once again, a cool morning or chilly, however you want to describe it. It's a little drier today, gonna to be a little nicer today. Get outside and enjoy this one. Sarah Spivey has your forecast coming up. She says it's gonna be great. That's what she says. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Well, tonight at sundown, Hanukkah begins. During the eight day Jewish holiday, families will light the menorah and kids will open presents. This year, Hanukkah celebrations are starting earlier. Normally, they fall closer to Christmas or at least in the month of December. This will be the first Hanukkah to be officially celebrated in the vice president's home. Doug Emhoff, husband of Vice President Kamala Harris, 
tweeted Hanukkah's long been his extended family's favorite holiday. It's a really giant menorah. <laughs> Like on a cherry picker or crane wow. trying to light Yeah, it. that was impressive. That was cool. You know what? And the weather today is going to be a lot nicer than it was yesterday. Yesterday was one of those days where you just sat inside, you hunkered down. Hey, I want you to look at your screen and if you need to, come closer to the TV. Come on. I won't bite. Come on. I got something to show you. Look off on the horizon here. Can you see that thin line? That's actually very shallow fog that is out there in places around San Antonio, in the valleys and the nooks and crannies around the area, we have got some shallow fog. Now at the airport right now, visibility is being measured at a perfect 10 and you can see about 10 miles there off in the distance. But if you're planning on driving around this morning, know that you will run into some areas of fog. It's 44 chilly degrees out there and visibility is down to three quarters of a mile at Stinson. So again, that fog is out there. Visibility down to three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels, down to seven miles at JBSA Randolph, down to five in Castroville. And a wider view here, you can see that visibility is down to four miles in Gonzales. We've got saturated soils out there from yesterday's rains, and those temperatures are awfully close to the dew points, and so that's why we're seeing some areas of shallow fog. But the key word there being shallow fog, we're going to see the skies clear and it's going to be a really nice day for us. It is chilly though out there to start the day. 43 in Kerrville, 43 in New Braunfels, 42 in Hondo, 49 in Pleasanton, 43 in Uvalde, 46 in Rock Springs and 51 in Del Rio. So yeah, we saw about four tenths of an inch of rain yesterday at the airport. It was a gray day with on and off again light rain pretty much throughout the day. But as we take a wider view, you can see that all of that rain has moved on off to the east as that low pressure system is pushed off to the east as well. And behind that, we're seeing drier air filter in from the north. So today is going to be a day where we'll have low humidity, plenty of sunshine, and a north wind as well. Take a look at the high risk future cast. It's possible to see some cirrus clouds out there throughout the day today, but generally a very pleasant day. That morning fog will clear here just within the next couple of hours or so. We're going to see plenty of sunshine 62 at noon, 66 for the high temperature with low humidity. It's going to feel absolutely great outside. Sun's going to set at 535 and if you have Sunday night plans, Know that it's going to get chilly fairly quickly. We'll be already at 50 degrees by 10 p.m. North winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. If you're traveling across the state of Texas today, which a lot of people will be doing, know that the weather should not be much of an issue. Right around noon, we're really only going to have cloud cover across parts of East Texas. Elsewhere, plenty of sunshine. This afternoon, temperatures should be in the 60s and even in the 70s across the state of Texas. And then if you're traveling late tonight, it'll be chilly, but at least the weather will Will cooperate. We're expecting no rain across the state of Texas today. Uh, the traffic, however, will be another issue, of course. Now we're going to enjoy low humidity for tomorrow and Tuesday, but by Wednesday, the humidity will be noticeable, not oppressively humid, but dew points will be back into the 60s. And so what that's going to do to our forecast is make things a bit more mild for us. So we'll start off chilly tomorrow, topping off at 68, chilly Tuesday morning and comfortable in the afternoon at 70. Then humidity is going to increase on Wednesday. We'll see a chance for isolated showers and storms Thursday through Saturday, but really no big rain chances in our forecast over the next seven days. So again, grateful for yesterday's rain, even though it came with the gray skies. David, Sarah, I didn't mind the couch time, <laughs> movie time, blanket time. It was good. Football time. <laughs> 616 in 45 degrees. Well, a group of pilots are celebrating a first on the continent of Antarctica. Straight ahead, we'll tell you what they accomplished and how they could help people travel to the bottom of the earth. And the Roadrunners' final game on the road as they try to end the season with a perfect 12 0 record. We're taking the highlights to you coming up. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, nine, six, fireball nine, daily four, four, one, six, six, fireball seven. Cash five is two, three, 10, 27, 31, and lotto Texas, 11, 13, 24, 31, 34, 47, and powerball eight, 32, 55, 64, 66, fireballs 10, power play is two. Good luck.
Five-time record for the UTSA Roadrunners. They were one win away from a perfect regular season for the first time in program history in North Dallas, taking on North Texas. What meant to be the Roadrunners fall behind early on a wet and dry day. Running back DeAndre Torrey scores from four yards out. Runners down 17-6 in the second quarter. That's when Frank Harris runs up the middle, shakes the defender, then a little spin move. And he's gone, 69 yards for the touchdown. UTSA down 17-13, but then UNT claws back. Ikea Ragsdale toes the line, and he's going to race for a 15-yard touchdown. That put North Texas up 24-13. North Texas goes on from there. UTSA finishes the regular season with their first loss. They're now 11-1, 45-23, the final from North Texas. Next up for the Roadrunners, though, hey, this is still good, the Conference USA Championship game. It's happening Friday. They take on Western Kentucky, kickoff set for 6 o'clock in the Alamo Dome. The Cardinals of UIW hosting their first ever playoff game yesterday at Benson Stadium after winning the first Southland Conference title outright. Their opponent, Stephen F. Austin, game tied at seven. Quarterback Cameron Ward able to score from six yards out to put the Cardinals up 14 to seven. We're now tied at 14 in the third. Ward takes to the air, finds Taylor Grimes on the 23-yard touchdown. Oh, stretches it out, gets it in. The matchup went to overtime, but UIW ends up winning it in OT. 35-28. Next up, Sam Houston State in Huntsville next Saturday at 2 o'clock. Oh, the fighting Texas Aggies taking on the LSU Tigers, trying to end their regular season with a win going into the half. Aggies trailed 17-7, jumped to the fourth quarter. And him, Zach Calzada, finds Jalen Preston, takes two hits but battles his way into the end zone. 15-yard touchdown. It's 2017. Next possession, the Aggies take the lead with just over seven minutes. But the score with 20 seconds left. Here are the Aggies right there. All the way across the field, and there's the score. Okay, so the Aggies lead, and then it's not good. 20 seconds left, LSU scores. Oh, oh what a tough way to end the season, but good for Ed Orgeron if you're an LSU fan because he's no longer the head coach of LSU as of right now. So he's not going to coach the bowl game, so he's done. And I'm Aggie's sorry, for the season, I'm sorry about season. Texas Tech. Oh, they lost two. They lost two and Baylor won. It's all right. We're looking forward to next year. Okay. <laughs> Basketball season. <laughs> 623, 45 degrees. All right. Catching a flight to Antarctica may one day be a reality. Find out what was accomplished that could make this happen next. So take a look at this. The first time an Airbus lands on the continent of Antarctica. High Fly is the aviation company behind the flight. The aircraft took off from Cape Town, South Africa. The majority of travel to get to Antarctica is by ship. The landing of the Airbus could signal more plane landings in the future. That must be some pretty thick ice. Well, I hope so. <laughs> land that big plane on there. I don't, I, you. I don't know about that. Oh, I'm a little skeptical myself. Because the more planes you have on there, the more chance you have of cracking the ice, right? Well, I also don't like cold weather, so. Oh, well. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. that. <laughs> I would go in a heartbeat. All right, 627 and 45 degrees. A man is dead after a crash on a local highway coming up where it all happened. Coming up after the break. And good morning. It is 630 on your Sunday. It's November 28th. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, when you're driving, you're coming from north. Did you have some mm -hmm. fog this morning? A little bit here and there, but not not much. Yeah, 35 and 410, Sarah. I had some pretty thick fog, and then it just cleared the further I got closer to, the downtown? closer I got to downtown. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know that's the kind of fog that's out there this morning. It's patchy. It's in the lower lying areas around San Antonio. I want to show you on Transguide right now, 35 at 410, and you can see that fog. It's actually improving as we speak. So uh, this fog is very shallow. It's going to be clearing out of here uh, very shortly. So you can see the fog there at 35 and 410. But here's a look outside at the airport right now. We've got clear skies and starting to see the first light of the day there. But if you squint, you can actually see the fog right there. That gray line off in the horizon. That's some of that shallow fog that's out there in places. And visibility is down to a mile and a half at the airport, down to less than a mile and a half in New Braunfels, down to two miles at Stinson, five in Castroville. And today's going to be a really pleasant day, especially compared to yesterday. Yesterday we were gray. We only got up to 53 degrees. We got about a 
almost less than half an inch of rainfall at the airport on and off throughout the day today. We're going to have plenty of sunshine and it's going to be nice and comfortable outside. High temperature in the upper 60s for us with winds from the north at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, as soon as we see the sunset, though, temperatures are going to take a tumble. We'll be back in the 40s by midnight. A couple of days here of pleasantly low humidity before we see the return of humidity. I'll tell you what that means for our weather coming up in the week ahead in just a few minutes. David. Thank you, Sarah. Happening right now, we want to get you back to some late breaking news south of downtown Cruz monitoring hot spots after a big fire there. Jonathan Colto has been staying on top of this story. Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, David. Good morning, Sarah. Well, San Antonio Fire Department have been busy battling, defensively battling the fire at this home located on the 100 block of Shea Street. That's near West Sayre and South Flores here on the city's south side. Now, I want you to take a look at a little bit of the effort that's taking place here. We know about four units responding to the scene just before 5 o'clock this morning. Cruise on scene tell us there was some initial water supply issues, but that's because they were trying to establish the house's location. But once they got here, they were able to quickly take on the flames. Now, we have learned this was a vacant home. This is a vacant home. There was some concern as there is a detached home in the backside. Crews say the fire wasn't directly threatening that home, but efforts to gain anyone's attention inside were not successful. But again, this home here was vacant. No injuries were reported. And as you can see here, crews are busy monitoring the scene here and trying to determine the cause of the fire. We'll update you, of course, as more information is made available. Reporting on the city's south side, Jonathan Cotto. Case at 12 News. Jonathan. Also new this morning, investigators trying to determine what caused a driver to crash into a wall divider last night. Police say around 1030, a driver was going eastbound on Highway 90 and trying to exit at Zarzamora, but crashed into that dividing wall head on. The driver died at the scene. Two other vehicles also crashed as a result of the incident, but no one in those vehicles were injured. Another crash, this one involving a pedestrian on the northwest side. It happened around 2.40 this morning on Culebra Road between Ingram and Petranco Roads. Police say a man was trying to cross the street when he was hit by a truck. The man suffered serious head injuries and was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. The driver of the truck did stop to help the man. Police say he won't be facing any charges. Now to a warning for pet owners, a potential deadly disease is impacting animals in our area. Lee Waldman spoke with a veterinarian about how to protect your pet and yourself. Looking at these dogs' faces, you'd never know each of them has something in common. They're all infected with Chagas disease. Chagas disease is just a parasite. According to Dr. Roy Madigan, the director at the Animal Hospital in Smithson Valley, 12% of dogs in Texas have Chagas disease. It's more prevalent the farther south you go. Similar to heartworm, animals can become infected if they're bitten by kissing bugs. That parasite loves to go inside of tissues and it has a, an affinity for heart tissue specifically. Symptoms can show up in a number of ways. Unfortunately, sudden death is one of them. This is playgroup one. Tracy's Paws Rescue says they experienced that firsthand in August 2020. When we had that happen to us, um, we made the commitment that we would never hand over another dog to another family that we had not tested for Chagas disease. Testing isn't done at every veterinarian's office. It's something pet owners need to ask for. Dr. Madigan says they're trying to change that. You know, we're currently in the process of developing a, a test that we can run in-house. So every veterinarian will have access to that. Dr. Madigan and Cowley are working to bring more awareness of Chagas disease. While there's no FDA approved treatment yet, it doesn't need to be a death sentence for your pet. Madigan has filed an INAD, investigational new animal drug, he believes will help. It uses a combination of two different drugs. So they've been repurposed. And with those two drugs, if you can start it, and you can continue on before you're in full heart failure. Um, these guys 100% cure rate. Now that was Lee Waldman reporting. There are no pills or vaccines to treat this disease. Instead, if you see kissing bugs in your yard or around your home, call pest control and have them treat that area. Keep in mind, people can also be infected with Chaga's disease. It's important to know you cannot catch it from a pet that has it. You can contract it if a kissing bug bites you. In your morning headlines in Tennessee, police investigating a deadly shooting that left two teenagers dead and several family members injured. 
Investigators say six family members were shot inside an apartment. Two brothers were shot to death. Their 40 year old mother, along with two other victims, sisters, a 13 year old in the home survived the shooting. Police say, according to the victims, two armed men entered their home and investigators think robbery was the motive. Officials in Michigan are investigating an incident involving an active shooter at a transportation center. When authorities arrived, multiple victims were found with non-lightning threat threatening gunshot wounds. Both police and the suspect got into a gunfight. The suspect was shot by police and taken to the hospital where he later died from those injuries. Now to the holiday travel rush today is expected to be one of the busiest travel days of the year. Millions of Americans taking to the roads and the skies for the big return home. 2.4 million people expected to fly. That's the most airline passengers in one day since the pandemic began. As for the roads, it's going to be busiest between 1 and 7 this evening. So if you have to hit the road, it's best to leave now, at least before noon. Yeah, get up early. There was already traffic on the road this morning when I was coming in. Really? I like stuck behind the slow person and then. Oh, how somebody, dare they? Was like, man, how come dare on. they? Already. <laughs> 638, 45 degrees. Okay, who wouldn't want one of these sitting under your tree? But is it a wise choice for your family? Just ahead, consider checking your list twice before gifting a puppy this holiday season. And outside with live cam, at least the bad weather won't be affecting travel on the roads today. Look at that sunlight. Beautiful. There's Pipe has got your forecast coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. What a difference a day makes I or a know. morning makes. Man, it's gorgeous out there. It, the sunrise, Sarah, it, it's beautiful out there. It's and, great. And, and no rain today. No rain today, but it does depend where you're at as far as if you can see the sunrise this morning because there are areas of patchy fog. Hey, Sarah, how much rain did you get in your rain gauge? Did you check? I didn't check, but I had almost like, oh, I know almost two, three inches. Whoa, yesterday? Yeah, well, no, a combination from Thanksgiving I know Thanksgiving morning it rained uh, at my house That a lot. makes sense. Okay. To yesterday midday. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, most areas got about a few tenths of an inch of rainfall. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of that rainfall uh, over the past uh, 36 hours or so. Not a ton out west, about a quarter of an inch near Del Rio and El Eagle Pass. And then in the hill country, areas got up to about a half an inch of radar estimated rain. Near the metro area, anywhere from a few tenths to about half an inch of rainfall. Again, four tenths of an inch near the airport. And the real winners yesterday were areas south and east of San Antonio. Cuero getting uh, about three quarters of an inch of rain. Nixon Smiley three quarters as well as uh, Floresville area. So again, there are some areas where the ground is saturated out there, and so we do have some patchy fog, but we're not going to be worried about rain today because the big rainmaker pushing off to the east. All of the rain has exited Texas, and behind it, we're going to see some drier air settle in place today around south central Texas. It's chilly across the state of Texas, although not freezing really anywhere. Uh, 34 in Lubbock and in Amarillo, 50 in Dallas, 45 in El Paso, and 49 in Laredo. If you have plans to travel across the state of Texas today, it's going to be pretty nice out there, other than the traffic from the busiest travel day, uh, one of the busiest travel days of the year. Uh, we really won't have to worry about any uh, kind of rain across the state of Texas. 43 in Yavalli, 44 in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs, 49 in Pleasanton, and 45 in New Braunfels. Here's a look outside right now. You can see that shallow fog there on the horizon. In some areas, visibility is less than a mile, but right now visibility down to three miles in New Braunfels, down to five at the airport, down to five in Pleasanton. So if you have early travel plans this morning, you will run into some areas of patchy fog. But today's going to be a really nice day. We're going to see skies clear. We'll have most Mostly sunny skies and temperatures will top off around the metro area in the upper 60s. Off to the west, 75 for the high temperature in Del Rio, 73 in Carriza Springs, 75 Laredo, 68 down in Corpus Christi, 66 for the high in Kerrville, 68 in Hondo, and right around the San Antonio metro area, upper 60s for the high. We'll be at 62 at noon and around 66 for the afternoon high temperature. Mostly sunny skies this afternoon, a few cirrus clouds out there, definitely a possibility. Winds are going to be 
from the north at 5 to 15. Maybe a gust up to about 20 miles per hour here and there, but all in all, a very nice day. Once the sun sets at 535, it's going to get chilly tonight. So if you have late night plans uh, or just evening plans in general, bring that jacket with you because uh, temperatures are going to be in the 40s already by midnight. Now, looking ahead, we are expecting the humidity to be on the rise. Now, it's going to be nice and dry uh, both uh, today and tomorrow. Um, Monday, dew points are going to be in the 30s. Even Tuesday, dew points will be in the 50s. That's still pleasant. But by Wednesday, those dew points will be back into the 60s. Once a dew point reaches above 60 degrees, that's when you can kind of really notice the humidity in the air, and you'll definitely notice it by Wednesday afternoon through the weekend. Speaking of, there is a small chance for rain Wednesday through uh, about Saturday. Uh, morning lows will be much warmer. We're in the low 40s right now in many places. By Thursday morning, we're going to be near 60. 60 degrees. So seeing that fog clear out there uh, right now today, reaching 66 for the high, 42 for the morning low, 68 tomorrow for the afternoon high temperature, plenty of sunshine, 45 early Tuesday morning and 70 degrees on Tuesday. You'll notice the clouds increasing and then by Wednesday noticing that humidity. Temperatures will climb to the low 70s for the high temperature, so a bit warmer than seasonably average. The average this time of year is right around 68, so a little warmer to to end the weekend. Hey guys, you got any outdoor plans today? I know David probably has to finish his outdoor decorations. Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the weather will be nice for you, David. You might even need some uh, sunscreen. Oh. I assist. You assist? I don't, yes, I just do what I'm told. You're Santa's <laughs> helper. I'm Santa's little helper. All right. <laughs> okay, Santa's helper. Where dogs can make you healthier, happier, and even keep you safe. Two out of every three American homes have a pet. That number significantly increased during the pandemic. And now that Christmas is just around the corner, there may be another rush to add a fluffy or Fido pet to the family. But as Nancy Alvarez reports, there are a few things you should think about before getting a pet this season. You've got your list, but should you give everything on it? After the holidays, local shelters see a spike in incoming dogs, even well into March. For us, it tends to be puppies. Um, they get returned within usually 36 to 48 hours. People get a puppy at home and they're like, holy shnikes, this is a lot of work. Know which dog would fit into the person's lifestyle. There are several breed match quizzes you can take online. A lot of it is all about your preparation in advance. Other important considerations, cost. Can the person afford food, supplies, and health care? What is their interest level? Have they been talking about owning a dog for weeks or years? The answer is critical. Who will be the main caregiver? Also, does the dog fit into their lifestyle? Do they travel too much? Do they have someone who can watch the dog for them? We ask a lot of questions around lifestyle because that's ultimately what somebody needs to understand when they are bringing this roughly 15-year commitment into their lives. Just a few things to think about before Santa comes to town. <laughs> and holy shnikes, that was not Nancy. No, oh, that was David reporting. I will say, I have two dogs. Best investment ever made. Is it? Yes. All right, well, here's another tip. You can wait until after the holidays to adopt a pet and help relieve the shelters of the new adoptees. And give you more time to consider which pet is right for you. That's right. Adopting is the way to go. Volunteering at your local shelter could also be helpful when debating if you're ready to make that commitment. Find out what shelters are near you by visiting ASPCA.org. I like that. Holy shnikes, it's 46 degrees. <laughs> 648. Hey, and week three of high school football, yeah. David. We've got some highlights coming up. Several local teams are still in the mix. Taking a look outside with the roads, like Sarah Spivey was saying, that fog is starting to clear up and it's starting to be a beautiful day out there. And as we go to break, let's check out some lottery numbers, see if you're richer today. Pick three, seven, nine, six. Fireball is nine, and your daily four is four, one, six, six. Fireball is seven. Cash five, two, three, 10, 27, 31. Texas Lotto, 11, 13, 24, 31, 34, 47. I have not checked my Powerball ticket this morning. 8, 32, 55, 64, 66, Powerball 10. I know this was over 200 million. Power play two, good luck. Week three of high school 
football playoff action yesterday and last night. The Animal Dome hosting the 4A matchup between Bernie and Austin LBJ. Bernie's running back Riley Pachisic gets the ball and gets outside and there he goes. Oh, bam. Right there at the 25 yard line before getting knocked out of bounds. A few plays later, same guy. He gets to go over the line for the touchdown. 7 0 Bernie. But the Jags were on the prowl. The pass goes to Caleb Brown. He breaks free. That's a 46 yard pass catch and run. Bernie's season comes to an end 68 24. In the TAP State semifinals, Central Catholic ticket on Midland Christian in Brownwood. Bulldogs up 28 7 at half. Rolling in the third. Handoff goes to Cole Gunter right up the middle. It's 35 7. Buttons trying to rally. Silas Gomez hits Carlos Pena in the end zone for the seven yard score, but it's not enough. Buttons fall 41 14. And here's a look at the week 15 of big game coverage. Liberty Hill taking on Alamo Heights Friday night, 7 o'clock, Bobcat Stadium. And then Franklin versus Poth Friday, 7 o'clock at Pflugerville. And also we have Quarrel and Navarro. They do battle Friday, 730, Bastrop Memorial Stadium. And Brennan taking on Austin Lake Travis Saturday at 2 o'clock, Tiger Stadium and Dripping Springs. That ought to be a good one. Two of the best in the states. All right. It is 654 and 46 degrees. Now here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, global concerns over the new Omicron variant. Cases now confirmed in Europe as the U.S. prepares to implement travel restrictions in just hours. And it's all happening amid an increase in new COVID cases here at home. Plus the build up to Cyber Monday, where to shop and save following massive Black Friday numbers with Americans spending billions in holiday shopping already. And a major moment for our very own Michael Strahan, the New York Giants, retiring his iconic Iconic number 92. It's all ahead here on GMA. San Antonio Fire Department defensively battling the fire at this home located on the 100 block of Shea Street. That's near West Air and South Florida is here on the city south side. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Roughly four units arrived to this scene just before 5 a.m. Crews on scene tell us there was some initial water supply lines issues, but once they were able to establish the location, they were able to quickly take on the flames. Now, we have learned this was a vacant home. There was some concern as there is a detached home in the backside, but crews say the fire wasn't directly threatening that home, but efforts to gain anyone's attention inside were not successful. But again, this home here was vacant. No reports of any injuries. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting on the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And we also want to remind you that there are still a few days left in No Shave November. And get this, so far more than $14,400 have been raised. Woo. Wraps up on Tuesday, so you still have time to donate. Also on Tuesday, several other guys participating will get their beard shaved live on GMSA at 9. For more information, just head to ksat.com slash no shave. There you can find the link to donate to Team KSAT. We'll continue sharing updates on GMSA. And we do have some patchy fog out there this morning, so be aware of that. If you have early morning travel plans, you may run into some fog, but that'll lift and it's off to a chilly start. We're 44 degrees at the airport, 43 in Bulverde and 46 at Bernie Stage. But today we're going to warm up really nicely. We'll be near 66 this afternoon with plenty of sunshine. Winds from the north at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Looking at the seven day forecast, another nice day tomorrow after a chilly start. Ditto weather on Tuesday and then humidity will increase from Wednesday through Saturday. That'll result in more mild mornings and comfortable afternoons. A small chance for rain Thursday through Saturday. All in all, a really nice forecast as we start December, guys. We still have yet to reach freezing in San Antonio. I'll take it. Sounds good. We appreciate you watching this morning. And we will be back at 8 a.m. GMA starts now. Have a great Sunday. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Firefighters very busy this morning with two separate house fires in different parts of the city. We've got the latest information for you coming up in a few minutes. Much different morning than it was yesterday. That sun is out 48 degrees at 8 a.m. Sarah says it's shaping up to be a beautiful day. She'll have our Sunday forecast in just a bit. And good morning. It is 8 o'clock on Sunday, November 28th. Two Thanks. days left. Well, today, I guess we're just getting started with today. So you count today and then two more days left in November. 
and then you get to shave. Oh, that'll be a great day. <laughs> so, but we haven't we haven't hit freezing yet. Sarah was saying earlier. You know so what? Just deal. don't. No, 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 no. We're we're good. We haven't in San Antonio. Now there have been a couple of spots up in the hill country that have briefly touched freezing. Our average first freeze in San Antonio is November 30th, and we're not going to hit freezing by then. So. We're, we're all right. We're doing good. Uh, take a look outside right now. You can see we're looking at a good mixture of uh, some layers of clouds there. We've got some low level surface fog close to the surface. Then we've got uh, some high thin cirrus clouds as well. It's 47 degrees, partly cloudy out there right now, and visibility is improving. Earlier we had visibility as low as about a half a mile around San Antonio, but as you can see, Total improvement of the visibility around m many of the main uh, weather sites there, but still some fog out near Seguin. Uh, visibility down to, uh, as I mentioned, a half a mile earlier in San Antonio. That's because the temperatures and the dew points were right near each other, but we're seeing those temperatures rise. It's still chilly out there, 47 at the airport, 47 in Bulverde, 47 in Bandera, 46 in Castroville, 43 in Divine, and 46 in New Braunfels. Hey, today's going to be a great day to knock out some of those chores. Perhaps you want to decorate outside for the holidays. Know that uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Plenty of sunshine, 62 at noon, 66 for the afternoon high temperature. North winds at 5 to 15 and getting cool tonight fairly quickly. We'll be near 50 degrees as early as 9 p.m. Hey, coming up in the forecast, it is one of the busiest travel days of the year. I'll have a look at the weather across the state of Texas if you're planning on hitting the roads coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a house being renovated on the city's west side destroyed by a fire early this morning when firefighters arrived at the scene on Erline Avenue. Around four this morning, they found flames had taken over the home. The left side of the house partially collapsed. No one was injured because the home was vacant and under remodel. Officials believe the fire started in the garage and quickly spread throughout the empty house. Soon after that fire in Erline, firefighters got another call for a house fire. This one in the 100 block of Shea Street on the city's south side. That's near West Sayers and South Flores. The fire happened at a vacant home. Officials say the fire wasn't directly threatening any of the neighboring homes, and they were able to get it out pretty quick. No injuries reported. The cause of the fire under investigation. Investigators are trying to determine what caused a driver to crash into a wall divider last night. Police say around 1030, a driver was going eastbound on Highway 90 and trying to exit at Zarzamora, but crashed into the dividing wall head on. The driver died at the scene. Two other vehicles also crashed as a result of this incident, but no one in those vehicles were injured. Top stories we're continuing to follow this morning. There are still several questions surrounding a double homicide at a northwest side apartment complex. We first brought you this story as late breaking news yesterday on GMSA. A man and a woman were found dead at the Seven Oaks Apartments on Danny K. The man was found outside by a stairwell. The woman was found inside an apartment unit. The two have not yet been identified and we have not gotten another update from police about this incident. It's still unclear what happened, but officials are calling this a homicide. So far, it's unclear if there are any suspects, and we will continue to monitor this story and bring you the latest information on air and online. Well, as the holiday weekend comes to an end, those who travel to visit friends and family are making their way back home in airports, anticipating lots of traffic. Jonathan Cotto checking on travel conditions, and he now joins us live from the San Antonio International Airport. Good, John, good morning, Jonathan. We know it was crowded earlier in the week. What's it look like today out there? Good morning, David. That's right. Well, it was looking pretty busy just moments ago. Folks catching those early morning flights. Things are simmering down now, but it's expected. You know, it's the end of the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Tomorrow's the start of the work week. So an increase in flights, departures and arrivals is expected. But take a listen to this. It, TSA is saying the highest uh, travel day uh, in history, in TSA history, is the Sunday after Thanksgiving of 2019. That was pre-pandemic. Now then, a nearly 2.9 million people were screened at airport checkpoints across the country. They say the travel volume amount to those numbers uh, won't be any won't be considerably higher to that, but they are definitely anticipating an increase. Now, between the days leading up to Thanksgiving and today is the holiday weekend, um, they're expecting about 20 million passengers to be traveled between the start of last week and today. We just took a look at the status board. There are a few cancellations and delays uh, here at the San Antonio airport, but other than that, conditions are normal. Reporting Jonathan Cotto.
KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. A reminder for Bear County property owners, those who have chosen to enroll in the county's property tax half payment plan will have to make their first payment by Tuesday. You can make your payment in person, online, or by phone or mail. All tax office locations will be open until 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday to allow taxpayers additional time to stop by. There are also curbside drop-off options available. The downtown tax office will have two curbside drop-off Options available from 730 in the morning to 630 at night on Tuesday. The south side, northeast and northwest side sub substation locations will have curbside drop offs as well from 230 to 630 p.m. Each tax office location also has drop box for drop box for customers to use after business hours. Now, if you mail your payment, be sure your payment is postmarked by November 30th. Credit card and electronic check payments can be made online at bear.org slash TAX that is on your screen or the number also can be called on your screen 1-888-852-3572. If you're a pet owner, we, oh, I'm sorry. And all right, there's if, more. There's more. And if you need to find out how much is due, visit the tax office website or give them a call at 210-335-2251. The second half of your tax bill won't be due until June 30th next year. All right, so if you're a pet owner, we've got a warning for you this morning. There's a potential deadly disease impacting animals in our area. Chagas disease is a parasite caused by the bite of a kissing bug. It can present a variety of symptoms, including sudden death to animals. According to Dr. Roy Madigan, 12% of dogs in Texas have the disease. Testing isn't widely available. Pet owners need to ask for it specifically at their vet. Currently, there is no FDA-approved treatment, but... INAD, an investigational new animal drug, has been filed and that could help. It uses a combination of two different drugs, so they've been repurposed. And with those two drugs, if you can start it and you can continue on before you're in full heart failure, um, these guys 100% cure rate. Unlike diseases like heartworm, heart, heartworm, there's no pill or vaccine preventative you can give your pet instead. If you see kissing bugs in your yard or around your house, call pest control and have them treat the area. It is 808 and 48 degrees. Not the ending to the regular mm. season that UTSA was hoping for. Still ahead on GMSA. Highlights from the Roadrunners game yesterday afternoon in Denton against North Texas. And coming up after the break, a backstage look at a local theater performance. They'll get you and the family in the holiday spirit. Man, the outside once again, beautiful sunrise this morning. It's getting a little bit warmer as the day goes on. We're up to 48. That's like two degrees warmer than it was a couple hours ago. So we're getting there. Beautiful day, though. Sarah Spivey, get your forecast coming up. Welcome back. 12 minutes after 8 o'clock. So how about taking in a little theater performance to get you in the holiday spirit? The Public Theater of San Antonio is ringing in the Christmas season with a new music that's an original. It's all about the Alamo City. Ooh, I like that. Producer Priscilla Caraman and digital journalist Andrew Wilson give us a look backstage at the performance that's a perfect outing for you and your family. The Public Theater of San Antonio is welcoming back audiences for its second post-pandemic show, and this one is centered all around San Antonio. Traditionally, at the Public Theater, we produce musicals that have been produced before, and this time we have created our own musical review and sort of created a story built around it, all centered in San Antonio. This show is so relatable, and it's a good show for family as well, and if you are looking for something to put you in the holiday spirit, this show will give you some traditional music, but also some new pop songs. Also, this is an excellent show for folks that have never come to the public theater here at the San Pedro Playhouse because this is a historic theater in San Antonio. It is the oldest theater here. This used to be nationally known as one of the centers of theater in the country. I'm talking over a hundred years ago. Season's Greetings is our 700th production in this space. So if there's any show to come to, it's this show, especially because we really connected it to the city and to the community. Community. And that was one of our producers, Priscilla Cataman and digital 
journalist Andrew Wilson reporting. You can catch the performance now through December 19th to purchase tickets. Just visit publicessay.org. Yesterday, cold, wet, rainy. Today, yes. completely different. It's a little chilly, but it's a completely different day. And now a good David way to can week. help his wife put out the decorations. <laughs> I can. Sorry about and that, David. I will. <laughs> and it's, yes, ma'am. He's a yeah. good Santa's helper. Good husband there, David. Good husband. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside. We are seeing plenty of sunshine out there to start our day. It's a bit of a mixed bag, though, because there are still areas of patchy fog out there early this morning. Not at the airport, where visibility is perfectly fine. 10 miles is perfect visibility. Uh, 47 degrees outside right now, partly cloudy skies, a mixture of height and cirrus clouds, a few low clouds out there, and, of course, that patchy fog in places. Uh, those temperatures are right near the dew points. You can see See that visibility is improving around the metro area, but we're still seeing uh, some uh, pretty nice fog out near Seguin and in northern Wilson County. Visibility is down to four miles in Gonzales. Uh, so right now the thick of the fog is off toward the south and to the east of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Temperatures chilly this morning, 44 in Kerrville, 48 in Rock Springs, 45 in Carrizo Springs, 53 in Del Rio. Del Rio has some cloud cover. That cloud cover acted as a blanket and kept things a little bit warmer in the overnight hours but still cool at 53, 50 in Kennedy and 53 in Gonzalez. All right, what have we got going on? Well, all of the rain that we saw earlier around San Antonio from yesterday has pushed off to the east. It's moving into uh, Louisiana, uh, Alabama and Mississippi this morning. That's where that low pressure system is behind it. We've got drier air filtering in, and so that's why we're going to have some improvement to the weather today. That is, of course, if you think sunny skies are an improvement to yesterday's weather. Uh, well, we're going to be looking at some cirrus clouds out there, uh, so it should be a partly cloudy day with mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. 57 at 10, 62 at noon, 66 for the high temperature, north winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. If you do have plans outside tonight, just know that it's going to get chilly quickly as it usually does this time of year. As soon as the sun sets at 535, temperatures will be tumbling. We'll be down to 50 degrees by 10 and upper 40s by midnight. A big travel day across the state of Texas. If you have plans to hit the road, just know that the weather will cooperate. At least it'll still be, of course, very uh, intense traffic on the roads itself, but at least we won't have to deal with any kind of uh, inclement weather by any means. This afternoon, all of Texas should be seeing at least some sunshine with, with the exception of the Houston area. Temperatures will be mild, not too warm, not too cold, except for this evening. Temperatures will be falling very quickly if you have late night travel plans as well. But again, no issues with rain across the state of Texas today. Um, humidity will actually be on the rise uh, by Wednesday. You'll be noticing that higher humidity dew points will be back in the 60s. But until then, Monday, Tuesday, tomorrow, Tuesday going to be very nice with low humidity. So what does that mean? That means chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. We'll be looking at ditto weather tomorrow and Tuesday for us. A little bit more cloud cover on Tuesday uh, than today and tomorrow. Uh, but that humidity will increase on Wednesday. That means our morning lows are going to increase too. We'll only be near 60 degrees for the morning lows by the middle and end of the week. Afternoon highs will be mild in the low to mid 70s with only a chance for isolated rain Thursday through Saturday. So it looks like our big rain event was was yesterday and we're going to be drying out here over the next few days. As far as rainfall goes, we got about four tenths of an inch at the airport, so not too shabby by any means, David and Sarah. Mow my lawn in the next three days. I like ditto days. Ditto if the, days. If the yeah. first of the ditto was a good day. <laughs> yes. Then we could have ditto days. Yes. 818, 49 degrees. Hey, we had some high school uh, playoffs last night, David. Yeah, we had a lot of high school action. Coming up after the break, we're going to show you some highlights of the teams in action last night and some college action as well. What a run for UTSA, but unfortunately, their regular season ended a win short of a perfect record at North Texas. The Roadrunners never really got going yesterday. They fell behind early second quarter. They tried to rally down 17 to 6. Frank Harris takes off at the middle. Jukes the defender, spins, scores on that 69 yard run. Roadrunners were back in it down 17 13, but UNT, UNT responds on the next drive. That's a 15 yard touchdown. Well, that's Frank Harris right there. Did I get ahead of myself? I, I was fast. Frank was not as fast as I thought he was. 
But there he goes. There he goes. Now here's the UNT run. Roadrunners looking for the answer. Harris loses the ball here, though. North Texas recovers on the 25-yard line. That was the third fumble for UTSA in the first half. They trailed 31-13 at the break, and they ended up falling 45-23. Yeah, it was just a perfect storm. You know, I did my best to, to get those guys ready, um, and I didn't get them ready. And that responsibility falls on me, and we're extremely embarrassed by our performance. Uh, sorry for our fans that drove all the way down here, our band that came down here. Uh, but nobody is taking this loss worse than those players are right now. Of course, it's hard to uh, go through the ups and downs of last week and put that to rest and get back ready to go. That's hard for any team, and uh, today we just didn't overcome it. All right, so they got to shake this one off. Forget it. Don't worry about it. Western Kentucky is coming to town. It's UTSA and Western Kentucky in the Alamo Dome. Remember, UTSA students, free tickets for this championship game. General admission tickets go on sale tomorrow. Hey, back here at home, Benson Stadium, University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals hosting their first ever playoff game yesterday afternoon. Second quarter, game tied at seven. Quarterback Cameron Ward able to score from six yards out. Goes up 14-7. Now we're tied at 14 all in the third. Ward goes to the air. This time finds Taylor Grimes. That's a 23-yard touchdown. Stretch that thing over there, Taylor. They took the lead, but at the end of regulation, it was tied again to 28. But UIW was able to pull off the win with the TD and OT. They win at 35-28. Next up for the Cardinals, Sam Houston State in Huntsville on Saturday afternoon. Oh, the 15th ranked Texas A&M Aggies trying to end the regular season with a little momentum going into a bowl. Take it on LSU in Death Valley. Aggies trailed 17-7 at half, 2010 after three. But they're rallying in the fourth as Zach Calzada finds Jalen Preston. He takes on a couple of hits. It's a 15-yard touchdown. AM now trails 2017. Aggies next possession. They take their first lead of the game. Calzada avoids the rush, rolls left, and finds Preston again. He cuts back against the grain, follows his blocking into the end zone. 32-yard touchdown, 24-20 with a little over seven minutes left to play, but the Tigers get the last bite. Max Johnson hits Dre Jenkins for the 28-yard touchdown pass with just 20 seconds left in regulation. LSU stuns the Aggies 27-24. The last game for the LSU head coach that he will not be coaching the bowl game. High school football playoffs for a third round playoff game. Bernie and Austin LBJ, the Greyhounds running strong. Riley Pachisic starts to the outside, turns a corner, and he's going down the sideline before ooh, getting knocked out of bounds at the 17. That's 25-yard gain. Two plays later, he's over for the touchdown. 7-0 Bernie. But the Jags answer. Pass goes to Caleb Brown over the middle. A little stiff arm. 46-yard score. Ties the game 7 all. Bernie's season comes to an end 68-24. Tap state semifinal. Central Catholic taking on Midland Christian. The Bulldogs up 28-7 at half. And rolling in the third. Handoff goes to Cole Gunter right up the middle. That's a 31-yard touchdown run. 35-7. Buttons trying to rally. Silas Gomez has Carlos Pena in the end zone for the seven yard score. Not enough. Buttons end up falling 41 to 14. And here's a look at who's still in the playoffs and who they're going to face next. Friday night at Bobcat Stadium, it's Liberty Hill and Alamo Heights undefeated. Kickoff for that one is at 7 o'clock. Franklin taking on Poth Friday night, 7 o'clock. In Pflugerville and Cuero and Navarro battles at Bastrop Stadium at 7.30 on Friday. And Brennan and Austin Westlake. This ought to be a good one. Saturday, 2 o'clock. Tiger Stadium in Dripping Springs. Little road trips for these guys. But that's all right. Go out there on the road and win. Come back. That's right. You have a job. <laughs> the job is to win. 826, 49 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA, the president has a busy week ahead of him. What he has on his schedule and how it could affect you. That's after the break. If you are just waking up, good morning. It is Sunday. It's 8.30. Good morning. Happy Sunday. It's November 28th. I know a lot of people are waking up either getting on the roads or maybe heading to the airport today, Sarah, because it's going to be a busy travel day. Absolutely is. And I've got some good news for this early in the day. It doesn't look like we're having many delays at the San Antonio International Airport. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, no, no major delays there at the airport. 47 degrees, uh, partly cloudy elsewhere across the nation. No major delays yet. And I say yet. <laughs> 
weekend because, as you know, it is one of the biggest travel days of the year. Speaking of our airport, let's go ahead and take a look out near the airport. Looks nice out there. Uh, we did have some fog earlier this morning in spots around San Antonio, but that has improved around the metro area. It's 47 chilly degrees out there and winds are turning to the north. Elsewhere, there is some fog still out toward Gonzales, uh, out toward LaGrange, Catula, Carrizo Springs, and even in Del Rio, visibility is reduced somewhat. And it's chilly this morning, 46 in New Bromfels, 44 in Kerrville, 48 in Rock Springs, and 46 in Carrizo Springs. As you know, yesterday was a chilly and a gray day. We only got up to 53 degrees. Today, a nice change of pace. We're going to see plenty of sunshine, and temperatures will climb nicely into the mid to upper 60s. 66 for the high in San Antonio. North winds today at 5 to 15 and getting chilly tonight after the sun sets. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about an increase in humidity, and that's going to have subtle changes in our work week forecast as we get ready to go back to work and ready to go back to school. Sarah, David. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a crash involving a pedestrian on the northwest side happened around 240 this morning on Culebra Road between Ingram and Petrenko Roads. Police say a man was trying to cross the street when he was hit by a truck. The man suffered serious head injuries and he was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. The driver of the truck did stop to help the man. Police say he won't be facing any charges. And police are trying to figure out what led to the shooting of a man overnight outside a home on the northwest side. It just happened before midnight. Police say two men were outside a home on Springdale Drive when one person pulled out a gun and shot the other person in the back. This is in a neighborhood near Babcock and Dezavala. The man who was shot was taken to University Hospital for treatment. The other man that pulled the trigger took off before officers arrived. Police say neighbors witnessed the shooting but were not able to give them a description of the man. We've learned the names of the two men killed in a drive-by shooting on Thanksgiving Day. According to the medical examiner's office, they were 25-year-old Eugene Hodge and 28-year-old Charles Woodsword. This shooting happened Thursday evening at a home on Sunrise Creek Drive near Benz Engelman. Police say Hodge and Woolsord were at a Thanksgiving gathering when someone drove by and opened fire. There were multiple people inside that home, including children. Two women were also shot. Police said witnesses we're not being cooperative at last check. Police are still searching for the suspect. Three family members being charged with criminal mischief after allegedly causing major damage to two vehicles and a business. 31 year old Gus Garcia, 36 year old Paul Garcia and 51 year old Pablo Garcia are all facing the same charges. It stems from an incident that happened back on October 12th. According to the arrest affidavit, a man and a woman were at the man's business on West Military near Marbach when Gus Garcia showed up and began yelling threats at him, trying to get him to come outside to fight him. The woman said she used to be in a relationship with Gus Garcia. The man and woman stayed inside the building and the entire time the three men were damaging their property. At first, investigators say it was just Gus, but then Paul and Pablo Garcia also showed up. The men allegedly took turns with a metal rod hitting vehicles, breaking windows, and even a window to the business. Investigators say Gus Garcia also drove his truck into the woman's car several times. Overall, the damages to everything is about $3,000. The holiday weekend coming to an end. Those who travel to visit with friends and family are making their way back home. Airports anticipating lots of traffic. Jonathan Cotto checking in on travel conditions and joins us now live from San Antonio International. Good morning, Jonathan. How's it looking right now? Not a lot of people behind you right now. Good morning, David. Yeah, not a lot of folks here right now, but moments ago, those lines were starting to build up, of course, catching those first early bird flights, but nothing out of the ordinary. It's expected, folks. Tomorrow is the start of the work week, so a lot of people going back home, but taking a listen to this. The TSA says the busiest and the highest travel day in TSA history was in 2019, the Thanksgiving after, uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving of 2019. That was pre-pandemic. Now then, a nearly 2.9 million people were screened at airports, checkpoints across the country. They say the travel volume won't amount to those numbers, but they will be considerably higher as the holiday weekend comes to an end. TSA says they expect to have screened about 20, 20 million passengers. Now, we did check the status boards for departures and arrivals. We saw a uh, a handful of delays and cancellations, but of course, the day is just starting off. That could change, but as of now, conditions are normal here at the San Antonio International Airport. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan.
In your morning headlines, a strong earthquake hitting the northern portion of Peru early this morning. Right now, the preliminary magnitude of the earthquake is 7.5. While it is extremely strong, it happened relatively deep, which usually reduces damage and casualties. The epicenter was about 26 miles northwest of Barranca. An intense week ahead for President Joe Biden when he returns from holiday break in New England. The new COVID variant, the possibility of a government shutdown, and the escalating situation between Ukraine and Russia. ABC's Mary Alice Parks is in Nantucket with the latest. After taking a breather up here this holiday with his family, the president is going to have to hit the ground running this week. Several big deadlines coming up quickly. First, funding for the federal government runs out on Friday, so there's the possibility of a government shutdown. And the Treasury Department said that as early as the middle of December, the country could once again be unable to pay its bills. Earlier this fall, Congress only passed these short-term stopgap measures to raise the debt limit and keep the lights on. So their backs are against the wall again. They're going to have to pass these big bills quickly. And of course, there are issues abroad that are also heating up. The president this weekend took questions about Russia's increasingly aggressive behavior on the Ukrainian border. There are reports that as many as 100,000 Russian troops are there, possibly threatening an invasion again of Ukraine. We know that the U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan had a call with his Ukrainian counterpart on Friday. And Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has NATO meetings this week. Just a few weeks ago, Blinken had the Ukrainian foreign minister to D.C. See. So clearly the White House is tracking this closely. They are looking for ways to support the Ukrainian government and deter Russia. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Nantucket. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, the Jewish holiday, being celebrated earlier than usual this year. It typically falls closer to Christmas or at least in the month of December. At sundown today, Jewish families will light the menorah and kids will open presents, often one for each of the eight nights that are celebrated. And here at home, the Pearl will be celebrating Chanukah on Wednesday, and they invite the public to join them. They'll be lighting the menorah and have a local rabbi share a special message as well as live music. The celebration begins at 6 o'clock at the Pearl near the menorah. We're in the last push of our Share the Shoes drive, and we need your help. Children need your help in our community. You can donate a new pair of shoes to any SAPD substation. We're looking for shoes of all sizes for toddlers and teenagers. All the shoes will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month, just in time for the holidays. You can make those donations through Tuesday. And for all you artists, you can now submit work for the 7th Annual Citywide Art Contest, remembering the late Martin Luther King Jr. Any art that's selected will be featured as the visual representation for the 35th annual MLK March and Legacy Celebration. This year's theme is free to be. Anybody who lives in Bear County can join in. Just email arts at sanantonio.gov. The subject line should say 2022 MLK Poster Contest. You have until December 8th to submit your work. For more details on the guidelines for the posters, just head over to ksat.com. It's 839 and 51 degrees. If you are ready to get into the holiday spirit, we've got some new Christmas movies that are out for you to enjoy. We've got the details coming up after the break. Yeah, yesterday was a good movie day. Today might be a good day to get outside, according to Sarah Spivey. 51 degrees at 839. She'll have our full Sunday forecast when we come back. Even though outside today is going to be a little better than it was yesterday, you still might want to stay in and watch some new Christmas movies. Yeah, especially if you want to get in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Santa is bringing a bag full of Christmas movies to theaters and streaming services this weekend. Just take a look. My sister and I had the best childhood that any kid could ask for. A pair of feuding sisters must come together to save their family and family business in a holiday chance now in theaters. Merry Christmas from Mom tomorrow. Netflix has three new Christmas movies already streaming as The Princess Switch 3 romancing the star with Vanessa Hudgens reprising her trio of roles. You may find this hard to believe, but long ago, nobody knew about Christmas. Maggie Smith stars with fellow Harry Potter alum Jim Broadbent in Netflix's A Boy Called Christmas, an origin story about Father Christmas. <laughs> Brooke Shields stars as an author and Carrie Elwes as a Scottish Duke in the rom-com A Castle for Christmas. Netflix opened the castle gates on Friday. Mr. Guess what? Your angels suck. 
I love kids. Shawnee Smith plays an overwhelmed mom trying to create a perfect holiday in Christmas versus the Walters. The dramedy debuted on Video On Demand Friday. I am the only American, probably the only person in the world, who has been banned by a federal court from decorating for Christmas. An over-the-top Christmas display is at the center of the documentary Twas the Fight Before Christmas, streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. I know what it's like to go live out my dream. I want that for you. Boy, that does wonders for my Christmas spirit. We end our Christmas movie list on a nicer note with Christmas in Tahoe, debuting today as part of the Hallmark Channel's annual Christmas lineup. There you go. And also now Hallmark streaming. Movies. I know, Mike, Mike Osterhage loves Hallmark movies. All right, but also streaming is 8-Bit Christmas starring Neil Patrick Harris. That's on HBO Max. Sarah, are you a Hallmark Christmas movie no, girl? I'm not. Neither not. am I. But here's the thing. I do like Christmas mm. movies. Like, we watched Elf on Thanksgiving Well, Day. you have to watch yeah, Elf. Yeah, absolutely. I feel, though, that Sarah Costa would be somebody who would get in trouble for decorating outside with Christmas. Hey, you challenge, all out, girl. challenge accepted. All right, and David's <laughs> gonna be hanging up his Christmas decorations outside as well. Just doing what I'm told. Yeah, yes sir. Getting on That's Santa's right. good list. <laughs> well, yeah, yesterday was not an ideal day to be outside, but we did get some good rain. I'd love to talk about how much rain we saw around the area. Not a ton, but at least everybody got some rain, even out toward Del Rio, about a quarter of an inch of rain, quarter of an inch near Eagle Pass, and up to half an inch of rain out toward Hondo. At least radar estimated rainfall up in the hill country, quarter of an inch near Kerrville, um, more than that near Bandera and about uh, half an inch, close to half an inch out near Canyon Lake as well. In the metro area, officially at the airport, we got four tenths of an inch of rainfall up to half an inch out near Bernie, up to uh, about a quarter of an inch in Seguin. So by no means was this filling up the rain gauges, but it was enough to at least supplement our November monthly rain total. So that is some good news there and especially good news if you live southeast of San Antonio toward Cuero, almost an inch of rain out there, almost an inch near Nixon Smiley and near Floresville as well. All that rain, though, pushed off to the east and we're going to be left with a beautiful day. Here's a look at where that rain is right now across parts of uh, Louisiana, Alabama and Mississippi. That upper level low moving out of here and behind it bringing in some much drier air. So today is going to be a beautiful day to enjoy some time outdoors. We did start off with some areas of fog out there and it is quite cool and cold across parts of Texas. It's 33 in Lubbock, 38 in Midland. Uh, Around the metro area, though, here in San Antonio, we're still in the upper 40s, but we're getting into the 50s as we speak. 53 in Del Rio, 51 in Pleasanton, 51 up near Austin, 51 in Beeville. We are warming up. Yesterday's high temperature was 53 degrees, and we're already almost at that uh, high temperature right now. Now, outside earlier, as I mentioned, there was some fog out there, but that fog, as you can see, has really cleared out of here. We're still dealing with some fog in Guadalupe County out near Seguin but otherwise visibility is improving some some light fog out near Castroville as well. Visibility is down to seven miles in the future cast. It's going to be a mostly sunny afternoon for us and temperatures should be climbing out toward Del Rio about 75 for the high temperature, but around the metro area mid to upper 60s is a good bet. 66 for the high in Kerrville, 68 in New Braunfels, 68 in Hondo near 70 in Pleasanton, 68 in Beeville as well. Here in San Antonio, what we'll see is 62 at noon. Again, we'll already be warmer than yesterday's high by 10 o'clock this morning and 66 for the afternoon high in the afternoon. We'll have mostly sunny skies, but if you do have evening plans tonight, know that it's going to get chilly very quickly. As soon as the sun sets at 535, our temperatures will be falling. We'll be back into the 40s by midnight and starting off tomorrow as a chilly day as well. North winds today at 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be nice and dry tomorrow and Tuesday, but notice that humidity does end up rising. By the middle of the week, those dew points will be in the 60s at about 60 degrees. That's where you can start to feel the humidity, and we'll probably have morning fog as well. But a nice weather uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. We've been calling it ditto weather, a ditto day tomorrow and Tuesday as well with cold mornings, comfortable afternoons. That increase of humidity, you'll see the clouds and morning lows will be much warmer, near 60 degrees through the middle to the end of the week. And highs will be in the 70s. Only chance for isolated rain Thursday through Saturday.
David and Sarah. Looks good to me. Thank you, Sarah. I think my wife is watching and she's going, doing what he's told. Did, he, did, she, did she just get a text? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dina. Sentence. Thanks for watching. <laughs> 849, 52 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, the shopping frenzy continues. We're breaking down everything you need to know about Cyber Monday with tips that could save you big time. And as we go to break, we'll see if you want some money. Pick three, seven, nine, six, fireball is nine, and your daily four, four, one, six, six, fireball is seven. Cash five, two, three, 10, 27, 31, Texas Lotto, 11, 13, 24, 31, 34, 47. Here's the big one over 200 million. 8, 32, 55, 64, 66, Powerball 10, Power Play 2. In the news you need to know before you go, a house being renovated on the city's west side destroyed by a fire early this morning when firefighters arrived to the scene on Erline Avenue. Around 4 o'clock this morning, they found flames had taken over the home. The left side of the house partially collapsed. No one was injured because the home was vacant and under remodel. Officials believe the fire started in the garage and quickly spread throughout the empty home. Investigators trying to determine what caused a driver to crash into a wall divider last night. Police say around 1030 a driver was going eastbound on Highway 90 trying to exit at Zarzamora but crashed into the dividing wall head on. That driver died at the scene. Two other vehicles also crashed as a result, but no one in those vehicles were injured. And we just learned that a man hit during an early morning crash has died from his injuries. It happened around 2.40 this morning on Calabra Road between Ingram and Petranco. Police say that man was trying to cross the street when he was hit by a truck. He was taken to University Hospital where he later died. A driver of the truck did stop to help. Police say he won't be facing any charges. And ending with some lighter news, we're anticipating our first look at the Christmas style being featured at the White House this year tomorrow. First Lady Jill Biden will unveil the year's holiday theme and decor. A number of National Guard members and their families will also be on hand to enjoy the festivities. President Biden will also deliver remarks thanking the more than 100 volunteers from the local area who helped decorate the White House for the season. Hey, are you traveling around Texas today? A lot of people will be. If you're planning on going around the state, just know that the weather should cooperate. We're not going to have any rain today. High temperatures should be in the 60s or near 70 degrees if you're going south of San Antonio. And then it should get chilly tonight. But again, no rain in the forecast. We're already at 53 degrees this morning. That means we're already at yesterday's high temperature. So we've got a lot more sunshine throughout the day. It'll warm us up nicely. 52 in New Braunfels, 48 in Lotus, 52 at Birdie Stage, and 46 in Kerrville. Planning on decorating outside today? Just know that, again, it's going to be nice and comfortable. High temperatures should be in the mid to upper 60s with low humidity and north winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Looking at the seven-day forecast, nice tomorrow and Tuesday, and then humidity will increase on Wednesday. That means morning lows will be near 60 degrees. Afternoons will be comfortable in the low to mid 70s, a little bit warmer than seasonally average. As far as rain chances go, Sarah and David, only a 20% chance uh, for rain Wednesday through the weekend. That's it. Sounds good to me. Beautiful weather for the week. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. And thank you for being with us this morning. We hope you have a great Sunday and a great week.